I love taking something that is super expensive, super high-end looking, and recreating it for a fraction of the cost. <laughs> Welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. I am so excited that you are here today because I have for you some really cool, really inexpensive, high-end dupes you are going to love. For the first inspiration dupe comes from Magnolia and this is the Amelia Handled Jug Vase. It's $52 and I'm going to try to recreate it with this jug. I got this with a Puerto Rican drink during the holidays and after it was all said and done I just wanted to keep that jug it is huge and it has such beautiful shape when I saw the one on magnolia I just knew I wanted to recreate it with this one so I'm just going to apply one coat of this mixture of spackle and chalk paint I always keep it on hand because it gives it a really cool texture then I'm going to sort of dry it a little bit, but I'm going to keep it on the tacky side. And then I'm going to take the same brush, not adding any more spackle or paint. I'm just going to brush it again, and it's going to create a very heavy texture. And it's hard to see now, but you're going to see it when the paint is on. I'm going to take it out to the garage and spray paint it with this flat black Rust-Oleum spray paint. And I'm going to do just one coat was actually sufficient. I just want to show you a close-up of the texture so you kind of get an idea of what the spackle would do and then using the technique that I mentioned earlier you can just see all that texture and it's just perfect I really really love the way that turned out and now I'm going to take some apple barrel latex paint I'm just going to mix two of them together to create that beige look that the original inspiration had on the bottom and then I'm going to tape the bottom leaving about two and a half maybe inches on the bottom and then I am going to just start applying the paint. Then I removed the tape and then I wanted to give it that speckled look that it had. So I'm going to take a smaller brush and some black paint and I'm just going to start spritzing it to give it that speckled look. And then I'm going to seal everything with the Rust-Oleum Chalked Matte Clear Coat and that will seal everything. And let me remind you what the original looked like from Magnolia. Again, it was $52 and then here's what mine looks like. I love the way it turned out. Is it exactly the same? Of course not because I didn't have a jug that had the same shape, but it is very close and I just love that it was absolutely free. For the next dupe inspiration comes from Pottery Barn and it's a French striped organic cotton napkins. It's a set of four for $40 and I'm going to try to recreate them with drop cloth. I'm going to start tearing as well as cutting four napkins and they're going to be about 14 by maybe 15 inches. They're not exactly square and I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to cut using the first one as a guide. I'm also going to cut a three quarters of an inch strip and this is going to help me create a seam for where those little fuzzies are. So where it frays, if I don't seal that seam or if I don't sew it, then it's going to keep fraying. And then every time I wash, I'm going to keep losing some of the napkins. So I'm going to take this fabric tape and my little mini press and I'm just going to start applying a strip of tape and a strip of drop cloth and I'm gonna start ironing it on top and this is gonna create a very tight seam in between both drop cloth napkin as well as the strip and it's gonna prevent that edge to fray even more. So now I have my four drop cloth napkins and as you can see, that seam right there is just perfectly sealed and so I'll keep the fuzz but it won't keep fuzzing through the months. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give them all a quick iron that way they're nice and flat. And then we are going to find the midsection. So we're gonna fold them in half and we're gonna iron it so that we can find the midsection. And then that's where we're going to be stenciling the line all the way through. So as mentioned, I'm just gonna fold them in half and then take my little mini press once again, iron them out just a little bit and then give it a seam right down the middle.
Now that I have that seam, I'm just going to put them flat on my table and I'm going to use some painter's tape and I'm going to put it about a quarter of an inch outside of that line in the middle. And then I'm going to start stenciling the line using a makeup sponge as well as Rust-Oleum Chalked Mint in the Country Gray. I did the same exact process to create two smaller lines on each side of the thicker line. I repeated this process on all remaining three napkins and we're done with this one. I'm going to remind you what the original inspiration looked like from Pottery Barn. Four for $40 and these are my creations. I love these. I have to say this is probably one of my favorites from today and I love that I already had the drop cloth and even if you had to purchase drop cloth it's, oh, it's not as much and you can get a lot done way more than just four napkins. I love the way this one turned out. For my next dupe inspiration comes from Bella Cottage and is this wash and dry sign, very farmhouse style. They have it for $140.88. Okay, for this next dupe, I'm going to take this uh, just piece of paneling. It was this long piece of paneling that I actually got at uh, the hardware store in the scrap wood area. And I had already done a DIY vertically and I had the word antiques coming all the way down. And I actually had it in my living room for quite a while and now I just want to change it up and turn it into the wash and dry sign that I saw with the inspiration. So this time we are going to um, have it horizontally and although it's already painted and it's already distressed, the original piece had distressed but it was more of a brownish antique look. So I'm going to give everything one fresh coat of chalk paint. And then I don't know if you noticed, but you can still kind of sort of see the letters where they were. So I just want to cover that up and make sure it just looks fresh and neat because this one I am going to sell on my booth. And I'm just going to give it the one coat using a chalked paint from Rustolian and then linen white. All right, it is painted, it is bright and white, and it is dry. So I have my words, the wash and dry, all cut up using vinyl with my Cricut machine. And I think with this one, instead of applying a transfer, transfer tape and then applying it, I'm going to risk it. I'm actually gonna put letter by letter. I know it sounds crazy, but let's see how it works out. And first I have to mark with tape kind of like where I want my letters to start. So let's do that first. I'm gonna measure just quickly here to see where I want the tape to go. And the painter's tape is just gonna allow me to put all the letters where they need to be, at least as close as possible. And now I'm gonna place each word where I kind of wanna see them. And this will give me a guide of where I want to start and finish the phrase. And then letter by letter, I'm just going to start removing each one, just like a sticker, and then applying them to the board, allowing the painter's tape to be my guide. My friends, I want to remind you that down in the description box, you can find all kinds of information. You can find a link to my Amazon store, which I keep all of my Amazon favorites, and also a link to my Etsy shop. I have recently updated and upgraded a lot of the content and uh, items available in my Etsy shop. So go ahead and check it out. It is linked down below. I also have my Instagram page, which I post daily, multiple times a day, and often things that I don't post here on my YouTube channel, and I'd love to connect with you there. It is also linked down below. And this is the last letter I'll be applying, and then I'm gonna start antiquing it using some antiquing wax by Waverly and a makeup sponge. And I'm just gonna start applying it everywhere where I feel like it needs it, especially the edges to make it look distressed. And then I am going to add some here and there in the middle of the board.
because of this paneling board is very thin i could not screw nor hammer any sawtooth hooks to the back so i'm just going to hot glue and tape a piece of jute rope this is going to be sufficient it's actually quite lightweight so it'll be nice to have something to hang it from at the same time not ruin the board and whoever purchases it they can always screw it in onto a wall but at least i give them a notch up to hang it and here's what the original piece looked like from Bella Cottage. They had it for $140.88. And here's what mine looks like. I cannot be more pleased. I'm so excited that I reused a board that I already had at home. I just removed the old letters and placed new ones. And I cannot wait to display this on my booth. And hopefully it sells right away. My next inspiration dupe comes from Mark and Graham and it's this beautiful little white vase with an H on it and they have it online for $99. For this other dupe, I am going to take this little tiny jar. It came in a set of three from the Target dollar spot and this was the middle size one. And I'm just gonna take it outside once I get in the garage and just spray paint it white. I'm gonna give it about a one and a half coats of this spray paint and basically it's just one full coat and then an extra coat only where it needs it. And then I'm gonna take it inside and I'm actually going to seal it with the chalked clear top coat. This is so that when I do the stencil, it's not gonna pull the paint from the uh, surface. And then I'm gonna take an H that I created. It's a stencil that I created on my Cricut and I'm just gonna place it right in the front and then stencil it with the Rust-Oleum chalk pen in the country gray again using a makeup sponge and then reveal the age and i think it's now super cute i'm about done with this one and i just cannot contain the excitement on how cute this turned out and for a fraction of the cost here's the original from mark and graham for 99 dollars and then of course here's mine which I love. It came in a set of three for $5 at the Target dollar spot. So maybe about $1.50 or so, but you can't beat that. I love the way it turned out. For my next inspiration dupe comes from also Pottery Barn and it's this home wall sign that was $148.99. All right, here we go. So I got this sign at the thrift store. It was $3.99. I grabbed it. It's actually a pretty good size and pretty solid, although I can tell it's hollow inside, but it just seems a pretty solid piece. So I grabbed it. Now this is not a vinyl. It looks like maybe they used a vinyl as a stencil and then painted it with like a very sheer metallic gold i'm going to try to sand it down smooth and then start painting it and hopefully you don't see those lines i am using a palm sander and a 150 grit sandpaper to smooth it as far as i can down and then i'm going to wipe it really really well make sure there's no remaining dust on the board and then i'm going to give it two coats of rust-oleum chalk pan in the linen white For the second coat, I'm actually going to apply it on the opposite direction as the first coat. Now that it is painted, I'm going to actually freehand the letters on the board. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, the easy way is to go to my Cricut, write the word or create the word home, cut it and put them on. I want to challenge me a little bit and sometimes I like doing that. So I'm going to take some... Um, maybe this or my yard and I'm just going to start making some lines on the frame and I'm just going to create a frame where each letter is going to be and then to the best of my ability be able to freehand them and I'm going to probably speed it up for you because it's going to probably take me a little bit to create all the lines and, and everything but what I'm essentially going to be doing is I'm going to make a frame going this way a frame going that way and then um, basically just start making lines where I have the frame and the space to make every letter. So as I mentioned, I am going to speed it up quite a bit because this process took me about 45 to an hour. 
And of course, I'm not going to have you watch every second of it. <laughs> but so basically, I'm just making marks, making sure all the lines are where I need them to be. All right. So now, if you can see it, I know it's kind of hard, but you can see that I have four even measured squares or rectangles. I, they're not perfect, um, but they are very, very close. And then e eventually, I'm going to erase all the lines and maybe give it a fresh coat. But now I'm just going to start creating the M, or sorry, the H, the O, the M, and the E, and then fill them in with black paint. So again, I am using the ruler as well as I'm going to be using some painter's tape. I realized that most of these letters are straight lines. So instead of having to freehand by myself all the lines, I'm actually just going to use some painter's tape. And that helped me significantly. <laughs> but it was still very satisfying and um, a lot of fun actually and then the only letter that i actually had to freehand was the o and if i'm being very frank i was not very successful i felt like it's not it was not even and i tried to fix it but it was one of those things where if you try to fix it you just know you're going to make it worse so i left it the way it was but let me know in the comments what you think do you think it was like a total fail or do you think it was okay i think it was okay but i think the o could have been better but let me know So I'm going to continue to freehand here the O, and that'll be the final thing. I did give it one coat of the top coat, the clear top coat from Rust-Oleum, just to seal everything in, and then it was done. I am going to remind you what the original looked like. It's this beautiful home sign. It was $148.99, and here is my creation. See how the O is like tilted? It irks me. I think I'm going to go fix it now. <laughs> Anyways, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of all of them. Which one do you love the most? Which one would you want to recreate yourself? And I love to hear those things from you. Anyways, this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I truly enjoy making these dupes. It's one of my favorite things to create. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you're visiting for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy the video. And I hope you consider joining our YouTube family. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. As always, I'm going to have another video here and a playlist with tons more of inspiration for you. Check it out. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.